What's up everyone, welcome back. After doing completely nothing at the trade deadline, the Lakers will reportedly look to improve their team through the buyout market. If you are not familiar on what the buyout market is, to put it briefly, the buyout market often refers to the time of year following the trade deadline, but before the buyout market deadline. Now, even though a contract bio can theoretically happen at any point throughout the year between a player and their respective team, they are much more common during this time period. And the reason for that is typically from a veteran player who no longer has a fit on their current team, because most commonly, a bio candidate will be in the form of a veteran player with a large contract who has now found themselves on a rebuilding team. In order for both the player and team to mutually benefit by parting, a contract buyout is then agreed upon, which is where the player will give back a certain amount of money from their contract in order to be waived. But now that you know, or might have had your memory refreshed on what the buyout market is and why a contract buyout happens, we can now focus on why the Lakers are choosing to go that route. There are no guarantees with the buyout market, but it is the much cheaper option compared to making a trade, as oftentimes, all it will take to add a recently bought out player is a minimum contract. And for a team like the Lakers, who are clearly not trying to dip any further into the luxury tax, the buyout market likely appeared to be the most cost-effective way to improve their team. And make no mistake about it, they definitely need outside improvement. Their current 15-man roster is not a very well-constructed one and could without a doubt use an upgrade or two. But with every player on their team currently having a guaranteed contract and with them no longer being able to trade any of them, they will need to waive a player or two in order to add a new free agent. The likely candidates for that are probably DeAndre Jordan or Kent Bazemore or maybe even Wayne Ellington, but regardless, they need to waive at least one player from their current team in order to be able to add a new one. And when you take a look at the biggest needs that they currently have, in my opinion, a 3 and D wing player really stands out as priority number one. But with 3 and D wing players being highly coveted in today's NBA, not many are likely to become available. I brought up Gary Harris before, or maybe even Timothy Luwawu Cabarro, but neither of them are guaranteed to be let go by their current teams. However, one 3 and D player who has already become available happens to be DeAndre Bembry. I cannot say I'd really blame you if you did not notice it during their blockbuster trade involving Ben Simmons and James Harden, but the Brooklyn Nets were required to waive one player in order for that trade to go through. And while they definitely did not want to let go of Bembry, considering he had been a very valuable member of their rotation, he ended up having to be the sacrificial lamb. Though I do not imagine that he will remain available for much longer, Bembry was quietly having one of, if not the most impactful year of his career up until this point. He may have only been averaging 5.8 points per game, but that is not where his true value lies, where he is able to make his biggest impact happens to be on defense. Bembry has always been a very committed defender and one who will bring a lot of energy and effort to your team. Defense has really been his calling card for the past few years now, and it really shined during his time in Brooklyn. He and Bruce Brown were without a doubt their top perimeter defenders and probably their most versatile ones too. Both Brown and Bembry defended nearly every position on the court for the Nets at one point or another, and I'm really not joking about that either. The Brooklyn Nets have been notorious for playing small ball lately, and sometimes that required Bembry or Brown to play at power forward, and both of them absolutely welcomed that opportunity. Unfortunately for Bembry, I guess that the Brooklyn Nets deemed him a bit too similar of a player to Bruce Brown, and one that was not absolutely needed to remain on their team. But as we know, one man's trash can be another man's treasure, and treasure is absolutely what Bembry could be to the Lakers. For how notorious the Lakers have been for playing with poor energy and effort, a guy like Bembry should be very appealing to them, and especially when you take his 3 and D ability into consideration. In that regard, he pretty much makes for the ideal player for them to target. No, he may not be the perfect 3 and D player, and might even lack a bit of the 3 point aspect involved in 3 and D, but they cannot afford to be picky here. 
The only true 3D wing player that they have on their team right now is arguably Stanley Johnson, and if they hope to turn their team around with a defensive mindset, they need to give Frank Vogel more wing defenders. In my opinion, Bembry would be a great option to start with. Not only is he a very committed defender like I mentioned before, but he is a very versatile one too. Which is exactly what you need for a small ball lineup, and given that Bembry already has prior experience doing that, it would not be difficult for him to transition into that role. He can defend positions 1-3, through three, and will do his absolute best to defend even bigger players than that. Along with that though, one thing he will provide them on defense that they do not already have, is a player who will create takeaways. Like I mentioned before, Stanley Johnson would probably have to be their best wing defender right now, and while he is without a doubt a good wing defender, he does not force a lot of turnovers. He definitely does here and there, but not on the level of Bembry, as Bembry is averaging 1 steal per game in only 19.8 minutes per game. Or from the perspective of per 36 minute average, Bembry is stealing the ball nearly 2 times every game, along with averaging nearly 1 block every game too. Putting a guy like that on the floor with LeBron and Anthony Davis, both of which will run the floor with him after causing a turnover, could potentially be a great combination to put together. Now we cannot fail to mention his 3 point shooting though, and while I have been seeing a lot of people mentioning that he is currently shooting over 40% from the 3 point line, I think many are failing to realize that he's doing it on a very low volume. He is not even taking one 3 point shot per game on average, and oftentimes, the opposing team will dare him to shoot the ball anywhere but in the corner. And I would be remiss to not mention that, however, the key with Bembry on offense is keeping him in the corner, because he can actually be a very good contributor from that spot. And no, not just from being a decoy or hitting an occasional 3 point shot, which by the way, is where nearly all of his 3 point shots have been coming from. During his time in Brooklyn, he attempted over 60% of his 3 point shots from the corner, and when shooting from the corner, he knocked them down at a 54.5% clip. Along with that, Bembry is very good at knowing when to cut from the corner too. If the player defending him is not paying attention, he will not hesitate to cut behind them. And as we know, LeBron loves to play with guys who are good at cutting back door. Caldwell Pope, Caruso, and even Kyle Kuzma each got a lot of easy opportunities at the rim from doing that. In conclusion though, I think that DeAndre Bembry is a no brainer for them to target. In my opinion, after he is officially weighed by Brooklyn, the Lakers need to be on the phone with him. So, I would like to invite you to join the official Discord for the channel. If you like NBA and Laker related debates and news updates, then I guarantee you would enjoy it. And if you want to join, be sure to click the link on the video or in the description down below. And if you want additional NBA content from me on YouTube, head over to my second channel called JSM Plus. I make videos about the entire NBA over there, so if you think you might enjoy that, make sure to check it out. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to everyone who took the time to watch until the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.